Okay guys, today I want to talk a little bit about the GFO. Um, I am currently using it here in my 120. I know when I talk to a lot of the folks out at my local fish stores, they tell me that it's not really necessary and a lot of them don't use it. I think uh, what I'm finding out is that everybody has to find their own way of uh, working with their tanks and what works best for them. Me being new in this hobby at only eight months in, I think I'm like a lot of people probably. I, have an overstocked uh, fish tank here and also I'm sure I'm still probably overfeeding uh, when I add new fish I like to make sure that they're, they're eating properly and so until I get some more knowledge I am going to use GFO it seems to be working very well for me um, over here is my reactor bought from BRS um, I'm currently using the standard capacity GFO in this one here and as you can see there's a lot of dust on the reactor um, I try to very lightly tumble it if you can see that there it's having a little trouble focusing but really really light tumble going on on that and uh, still is creating a lot of dust a lot of fines are coming out of that so I uh, have installed a sock filter on that particular line where it feeds back into my sump. And as you might be able to tell from, well, I'll show the top of it there, you can notice kind of the redness on that particular sock filter where it feeds in. Still get a lot of fines out of it even though I'm slow tumbling it. So um, I was also told by the saltwater stores that if I have some good microalgae, I will not need phosphate control. but. Uh, I have found that even with all this microalgae I've got going here, apparently I'm overfeeding that much to where I do have a phosphate problem because my glass would have to be cleaned every day if I didn't have this GFO reactor. So like I say, I think everybody has to just find out what works for them. This works for me. I'm only changing it probably every three to four, probably four weeks or better, probably at least four weeks before I'll change that GFO again, maybe a little longer. Um, We'll go over here into the other room into our new frag tank that we got going. We are uh, currently got this frag tank has been up and running for about six months. I'm, I'm sorry, actually it's been running about a month as of Thursday. This coming Thursday will be a month. So I will also I will update this video on the G on my experience with my GFO material. But in here, um, it's been running about a month. Uh, we actually, I bought the uh, some of the uh, bacteria from the pet store, from my local saltwater store, um, so that I didn't have to wait four weeks for this tank to cycle, which is what I did on my first tank. I put fish in it almost immediately, and uh, as you can see, I, well, I've got probably four or five fish in here. This is a, probably about a 65-gallon frag tank. It's six feet long. I uh, haven't had any problems. haven't lost any fish out of here. And uh, I just like fish and coral, so I'm going to have fish and everything I got. But anyway, um, after about two, three weeks of running, I noticed I was really getting an algae problem in here, having to clean the glass very regularly. So I installed a GFO reactor on here just about three days, two, three days ago, and decided on this one that I was going to run um, the high capacity GFO uh, material from Bulk Resupply. Quite a bit more expensive. Um, one first thing I noticed was it's a much heavier material, and uh, I have a very bad hair algae problem that started in here because, like I said, this is a new tank has been running. See all the hair algae going. Some of my frags I got going. Some of the frags I just put in here, but um, there's some zoo plugs back there, and you can see all the hair algae on those. So when I just moved that Stylophora back here in the back uh, from my big tank, it was kind of struggling. I've had trouble with those in my big tank. Like I say, I don't have a lot of experience just yet so having some trouble with some SPS's and some of them I'm having good luck with but anyway um, a lot of hair algae going on in this tank and uh, so we're gonna try the high capacity ferrous oxide in this tank and down here is this reactor and you can probably tell the difference of the two um, I'm doing a light tumble on this one also you can kinda see I got it bouncing there a little bit Maybe just a little bit too much, actually. I could probably slow that down some here. But uh, anyway, as you'll notice, there's just hardly any fines on my glass there. 
I'm gonna slow that down just a little bit there if I can. If you can see that glistening there, but still turning it over a little less bounce on the top, but so far we're getting hardly any fines out of this GFO. So I believe that this is gonna be much better. Like I said, it is a lot more expensive, but it's supposed to last twice as long. So when I'm feeding it back, I'm feeding also into uh, a sock filter. I would like to eventually get away from these sock filters because they're a lot of work to keep clean. But I got my little tube ran down into there into the sock with my return flow. But uh, anyway, so far I'm not seeing the fines out of that one there like I am out of the regular Ferrisock side. I also have a lot of microalgae which I took out of my big tank in there. I have a 60 watt uh, CFL currently on my sump with a 5K uh, bulb on there. And it seems to just grow microalgae like crazy. So, um, like I said, I must be overfeeding so much that I still have phosphate problems. I am going to continue to use that at least uh, until it gives me trouble. It doesn't seem to hurt anything else. I'm going to wind up actually putting a bio pellet reactor on this tank also, like I have on the big tank. Uh, a lot of my saltwater stores don't believe in those, but like I say, when you overstock a fish tank like I did have done, I've learned that I needed something to help me control those nitrates and my bio pellet reactor which is a reef octopus uh, I think it's a 110 model works awesome and about four weeks after it being in there um, it has totally taken control of my nitrates and um, got my water changes currently right now I'm going about three weeks to a month on the water change and still seem to have my nitrates totally under control with that bio pellet reactor so I got my nice little fairy rasp back here. My friend of mine is having uh, has been doing a tank rebuild, so I have some of his corals on there. That's his nice uh, frog spawn there. Stuck it in here to keep it alive while he's uh, getting ready. To currently, get a bigger tank. You can see the candy cane back there with all their feeder tentacles going. They seem to be doing very well in here. I currently just have a couple of uh, off-brand 120 watt. Uh, one watt LED pendants hanging over this tank and uh, everything seems to be doing fine getting ready to upgrade the lighting on my 120 and we're going to go I believe with the Zet light a 6600 model it's a new company that's been out for a little while but uh, just been really researching and gonna go with the Zet light I think instead of Ecotech so we'll uh, update on that when we get that new light in but I got a 3 watt 120, uh, a 120 with 3 watt LEDs over there which appears to be quite a bit brighter. So we'll probably move that on this frag tank and put it over this rack once I get the light change going. And uh, yeah, you can see all the hair algae. I will update this video here as uh, things progress and see if this takes control of my hair algae problem. It has already seemed to, in two days, stop the growth on the glass. I was having to clean this glass every day maybe just part of the fact that it was a new tank also but uh, anyway we will update this video and and uh, as soon as we see some re if we see results from this new GFO and we will post a new video when that happens